Hey, yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Lahima here. And today, we're going to talk about a piece of equipment that most of you probably have, but don't even know it actually can be used for music production. This device is a real time pitch control, a sampler, as well as a saturator and glue compressor. And this device is the cassette tape. Particularly today, we're going to be talking about using the cassette as actually as a tape loop or a looper. So when is actually a tape loop? Well, it's when you actually go inside the cassette itself and actually take the tape and form it into a physical loop. And this is really interesting because it allows us to use the cassette tape actually as a sampler. And it's really cool because we can pitch it up or down as the tape roll goes and roll goes throughout the cassette reel itself. So what we're going to do today is actually um, record some samples on this thing, then record them to Ableton and make a cool lo-fi track. But anyways, let's go and get into it. So in front of me, I have the three head cassettes that we're going to be using today, which is called a Martez PD-101, uh, I believe. And also I have the tape that we're going to be using. And as you can see, it's not that much tape in there because actually what you do is that you would take the tape out, form it into a loop with something called splicing tape. And generally, um, I make mine around 10 seconds or so. And also I have these notches on top that I've kind of filled in with tape because if they're not filled in, it doesn't prevent the tape from recording. And then also inside the cassette tape player itself, I've just covered one of the heads. Um, I've done that just to make sure that it can record because I out of the three heads, the read, write, and erase head, if the erase head is not blocked, um, you'll find out that that actually will erase your loop as you're recording it. So that's just kind of a handy tip, just in case you run into it. And also, it makes silence in the tape loop. You can use any tape you want. I just use the tape I had laying around. Uh, something really simple, nothing too complicated. Um, some plain scotch tape will work. Just make sure whatever you have isn't super sticky because it'll usually erase the heads of the um, cassette player. And so now what I'm going to do is to go ahead and just place it in there and uh, give it a whirl and see how it sounds. So as you can hear, we have a pretty nice kind of loop going on. Um, so I'm going to show you a few things you can do. So the first thing you can do actually is um, you can control the pitch in real time. Um, with usually most um, players have them. And this one, it just has a little knob on the front end of it, as you can clearly see. Uh, and it's just really cool. I love it. It gives it a nice warble, a nice gorgle as you're kind of using it. And you can pitch it up or down as well. It also has a tone control, just like any sort of guitar amp would. So you can control, I think it's basically a high pass, so you can, or um, a low cut. So you can basically cut out the high end um, as you want or pitch it up and down as well. There's also the half speed, um, which is really useful. So, and as you can see, when you put a half speed, it essentially drops it an octave. So a cool trick I usually do is I like to pitch it up an octave when I record it in and then pitch it down with the half time. So that way I get kind of a cool artifact as I'm using it. These are just some kind of general tips to help you as you use them. Uh, tape players are really cool. They allow you to get a lot of a lot more out of a sample than you would originally expect and give it a lot of character, um, especially for kind of like lo-fi beats. I think something like this is really useful because you can throw in something and then pitch it up or down and around until you get something you like. So it's kind of like a sample mangle at the same time, similar to the Coco Qantas that I've talked about in one of my previous um, videos, which I'm definitely going to leak so you guys can catch it. And and I'm just kind of going to pitch it down some more and kind of try out some different pitches and see what I like. Um, I may or may not use this for the beat we're going to make in a little bit. We'll kind of see how I'm feeling, how it breathes, but it's definitely nice. Ooh, I like that. That's nice. A little nice harmonics. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's real interesting, actually. I like it when you pitch it down a lot. It makes it really deep and earthy and girthy. That's actually like this, this particular three-head cassette player because it's just very good at taking something and really giving it a lot of beef that you wouldn't really have normally from the sample itself just by fucking the controls a little bit and messing around with them. Especially like when you're doing something like this where you're just trying to mangle a sample and find something you like. Um, and actually another thing too you want to know, uh, kind of notice is that when you're making your tape loops is that you want to make sure that um, you're cutting them to size because depending on how long the tape loop is centimeter wise, it determines the length and usually you can use an online calculator to find out how much, how long your tape is and how long it'll be based on the length of how, how much it is. Um, I think generally they go at 3.5 centimeters. Um, per second or something like that, so you can calculate how much, how many seconds long your, your loop is. Oh, this is nice. So 
I've got my OP1 and I've just got like a Rhodes loaded up on it. So I'm just going to use that and lay down some chords real quick. So next up, I recorded this flute onto the OP1. And I'm just going to be using that to lay down like a quick melody real quick. So after that, I'm just laying on some drums real quick. For your drums, you definitely want to make sure they're more on kind of like the acoustic side. Um, Lo-Fi tends to have some like more acoustic drums. Just a quick side note. Next, I'm laying on the kick. And then um, I'm gonna throw some hat, some hats on there real quick. Now I'm gonna throw an open hat. So pretty much after that, guys, all I did was just add like a vocal chop and then I just added like a little bit of vinyl dust and that was pretty much it. That was the whole beat. But anyways, guys, if you liked the video today, go ahead and make sure to first off subscribe, hit the bell button so that we can stay notified when I post new stuff. Uh, also as well, you can go ahead and make sure to follow me on all my social media at Lahima Beats. I post cool content all the time. Also as well, go to make sure to comment down below and tell me what you guys thought about the tape loops. Were they interesting? You know, what was the most interesting thing you found about them? Also, what would you guys like to see? Because there's a lot more things you can do with tape loops. Like for instance, making a Delay, or also using them to make instruments by pitching them up or down. Um, even more things than that. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys like the video. I'll see you guys next time. Lahima out. Thank you.